do the, the other side here. So all farms that land a client in or must develop and implement a manure management plan. So if your operation has two or more animal units per acre, you have to have a higher level nutrient management plan. There are very few operations that have more than two animals, two animal units per acre. And an animal unit is 1,000 pounds. So for example, a light horse is 1,100 pounds, 1 1.1 animal unit. And if you have a total of less than eight total animal units, you'll only need a manure management plan. And the manure management plan is what we're gonna go through today. It is free, it's easy. If you have to go to a higher level nutrient management plan, that is costly, complicated, and that's uh, another animal altogether. So I put some flyers back there of the Pennsylvania Nutrient Management Act, Act 38, who is affected. If you think you might have that many animal units, for example, if you have 15 horses and you have no pasture, then you would need that higher level plan. If you have 15 horses, but you have 100 acres of pasture, you don't need that higher level, more complicated plan. So, what must be included in a manure management plan? It has to have the acres in the operation, both owned and rented, so for you folks that rent ground, it's your whole operation. It has to have the types, numbers of animals, your application rates, any environmentally sensitive areas like wells, streams, and if you're going to apply in winter, that's some more paperwork. If you have manure storage, what you do if you stockpile manure and how you're managing your pastures and your animal concentration areas. Your barnyards, your feedlots. So, maps are required and I just went over maps previously, it's the exact same thing. Except uh, here they want you to have what the slopes are because if you're going to spread manure in winter, you don't want to do that on steep slopes because it ends up at the bottom. So I was driving through Indiana County today and I saw this manure spreader full of manure and the snow had just melted off but the ground's still frozen and I know all that's down at the bottom of the hill now. So, but that wasn't in Beaver County. <laughs> so, so I, I have the booklets in the back and we're just going to go through a sample. The booklet basically has an example, then this middle section where you can write your plan and then it has some tables in the back. Um, again, give me a call. I can help you write a plan. I do that for farmers all the time. I come, I sit down at the kitchen table with them and help them write a plan. But one of this is pretty straightforward. You know, the first page is basically your name, address, and that basic information. The second page goes over how many animals do you have for how much of the year and how many acres you have and then it talks about your environmentally sensitive areas and if you're going to spread during the winter and if you have manure storage, stockpiling areas, pastures, animal concentration areas. Animal concentration areas are any areas where you can't get vegetation to grow because the animals are wearing it out. That would be by your gates or in your feedlot, places like that. So, for environmentally sensitive areas, you'd fill that next sheet out and you might have a stream next to your field, you have a home water well, and maybe you have another stream, you know, out on the back, back side of your pasture. You know, the state really frowns on people spreading during the winter. Today would be a perfect example of when not to spread. When the ground's frozen and you're getting a big rainstorm, that's 
when there's really problems, that's when I people give me a call. And, um, so, but you are allowed to, in Pennsylvania, you are allowed to spread during the winter. In Maryland, you're not. But in Pennsylvania, you're still allowed to spread during the winter. Um, but you're only allowed to do it on flatter ground. And there are limits to how much you can spread. So, the next page is, is a summary of your manure management plan where you go through what your crop rotation is, your different types of crops corn silage, or hay ground, beans, whatever it is, what type of manure you're spreading, the, the season you're spreading, and then your planned application rate. Incorporation timing is if you're spreading your manure and then plowing it under or in some manner in getting it into the soil quickly. Um, those people around here it would be uh, unincorporated unless you're spreading it and uh, coming right back with the plow to uh, incorporate it. You can also do the calculation for how much nutrients you're getting out of that manure and then how much commercial fertilizer you would need. So by doing some of these calculations, you can determine how much fertilizer that you need to purchase. And right now, the price of fertilizer is just crazy. So you want to think about what nutrients you have in your manure and how you can manage your manure to get the most nutrients out of it and also meet these state requirements so that you have to spend the least amount on uh, commercial fertilizer and that helps improve your operation and improve the financial side of your operation. So the next thing we talk about is if you have a manure storage. Now, if you're a beef operation or a horse, you probably have um, a dry stacking area manure storage. Bed pack in your barn is not manure storage, that's just bed pack. Once you push it to the end of the barn or out into an area, now that's the manure storage. So there are, if you have liquid dairy, that's a whole nother type of storage. That's where you get into the bigger, more complicated storage because now you've got a liquid going there. And that manure storage facilities, they want you to write down what your manure storage facilities are and what you're doing with them. So next we come to pastures. Pastures is important. The state defines a pasture as an area with uh, vigorous vegetation, at least three inches tall, with minimal bare spots throughout the growing season. So 90% of the pastures that I drive by are not pastures by the state definition, they're animal heavy use areas. They might be five acres in size, but if the grass is one inch high, then it's a, an animal concentration area and not a pasture. So by the state's definition, you either have a, a grazing plan from NRCS that meets their specs or you're managing for um, three inches of vegetation throughout the growing season with minimal bear spot. So next we come to those animal concentration areas, which are areas where minimal vegetation grows. And this goes through what are you doing with those areas to minimize the manure and the soil from washing into the stream. You might have a 150 foot buffer of good vegetation between the stream and that animal concentration area. That's a great BMP. You might scrape it weekly to get the manure off. Um, but the whole key is to write down what you're doing to protect the water and to reduce erosion. Now next, here's, once you have a plan, you have to keep records. 
So particularly keep records of when you're spreading manure. So if there's ever any kind of complaint, you've got good records of when you spread manure. So if manure ends up on the road out here and you haven't spread manure since October and you can document that, obviously it came from somewhere else. Um, you have to keep records and for a plan to be current, you have to keep records of when you spread manure. If you have the manure storage and, and you know records of your crop yields and if you're giving away manure, so if you're generating manure and you're giving it to your neighboring farmer, you just need to document that. So in the back of that is a whole bunch of uh, charts that <coughs> you can use to calculate what your uh, manure application rate can be. For use smaller operations, you're not spreading that much manure. You're probably never coming close to the maximum that the state allows you to spread on these acres. But um, for the large dairy operations and others, you have to pay attention to these charts so that you're not over applying manure in excess of the state uh, requirements. So I always put this in here. So an NPDES permit, if you're building a apartment complex or you're building a barn, they're basically treated the same way. So if you're building a giant new barn, that's not part of your ag conservation plan. That's not part of your ag e &S plan. That's just the construction site like any other. So I'd like to go over uh, to sum this up. Some conservation practices, some BMPs you might consider. Um, this happens to be big blue stem, which is a native warm season grass, which is great for conservation cover, great for wildlife, great for erosion control. Next, we have a cover crop. You can see this is late October here, and he's got a cover crop, and it, it's it's going to be three inches by the time winter sets in, and it's covering almost the whole field. So cover crops hold the soil, hold the nutrients on site so that they're available for your next cash crop. You talk about no-till, you can see the residue on that field because the soil wasn't flipped over with moldboard plow. This is what we don't want to see. The field is being farmed to within a foot of the stream. Any fertilizer, any manure, any herbicides that are used on that field are going straight into the water. So, with animals, having a water source up high and dry and fencing the animals out of the stream is a great um, best management practice. And the last BMP, this is the minimum of what a pasture should look like in late fall. Three inches high with minimal bare spots. That would meet the pasture definition going into winter. So, and that, Brings us to the end of my. Uh, does anybody have questions about manure management? I am having a plan writing workshop on the 16th of March. I put flyers out. I'm having my regular spring meeting um, on Wednesday the 9th. I give pesticide credits there, and we talk about conservation practices, and we do uh, some of this uh, training then. And then I have, I usually end up with five or so farmers. Um, Wednesday the 16th, I usually have five or so farmers. We sit down, we go through some slides, and in uh, two and a half hours, 
everybody goes away with a 95% completed manure management plan. We, we take care of you. And remember, Conservation District's tool in your toolbox. If you need help getting these plans, that's what we're here for.